Hi guys, I wanted to make this part 3 to tie up some loose ends from part 1 and 2. First off, in part 1 of this module on multiple regression, I started with the data set that was slightly larger, a uh, smaller than the one that we saw in part 2. And the reason for that was in part 2 I included all the feature, the original features of the data set. So um, don't get thrown by that. So. Uh, in part one, you'll recall there was only about five features, namely the ones we ended up using. Okay. Um, tax. Fuel. Okay. Um, not the, actually, the drivers wasn't there, right? So these five were the ones that we saw in part one. Uh, and this data set includes obviously 11 features. Uh, the first one just being the name. So don't be thrown by that. Um, and the only thing that we ended up using in addition to the five in part two was region. And the reason why I wanted to include this one particularly was it's a factor. It's a categorical feature. So I wanted to include it so you see that it, uh, it's well handled by the LM function. Okay. Another thing I wanted to do was to talk about the um, a little bit more about extracting the vital information we need out of the model. So this stage here. Okay, I want to write out this equation together with you by hand. Okay, so our model recall is y hat equals b0 times sorry, B0 plus B1 times income plus B1 times miles plus B2 times tax plus B3 times DLIC plus B4 times region and I want to now replace all these B's the betas, the B's, the, the regression coefficients rather with the actual values. So here we're going to try to write this out. So instead of Y, I have fuel. So here's fuel, and it's fuel hat equals what's B0? Well, it's 3.812 times 10 to the second. So it's actually, I have to take this two decimal places this way. So it's 381.8. Point two. That's B0 plus what's B1? Negative 7.051 times 10 to the negative third. That means I have to take this 3 to the left. So 1, 2, 3. So this becomes minus. So I could change this to a minus point. Sorry. 0. Zero seven five one times income. So let me put income in parentheses. Plus what's B two? Ah, oh, look, I messed this up. This was B two, B three, B four, and B five. What's B2? B2 is the guy, our co coefficient for miles. So that's 3.681 times 10 to the negative 4. So I got to take this 1, 2, 3, 4 decimal places to the left. So this is 0 0.000, right? 0, 0, 0, 3681. times miles.
Then for tax, the coefficient is negative 4.115 times 10 to the 0, which is just saying it's just negative 4.115. So that's easy, negative 4.115 times tax. So tax seems to have a negative effect when taken together with all these features. OK, next, driver's license. D lice is positive 5.35 times 10 to the negative 1. That means this is going to the left one decimal place. So it's plus 0.535 times D license. These are all variables, right? D license, tax, miles, income, they're all variables. Right. And finally, we got to put our coefficient for region. So let me just swing this down here. This is positive, so I'm going to write plus 5.048 because it's times 10 to the 0, so it's just 5.048 times region. Okay, this right here that I've drawn, this whole long process that I tried to do slow, slowly together, is our multiple regression model. This is what essentially we can use now to make new predictions. So we could plug in an income, a miles, a tax, a driver's license, and a region, and we will get a predicted fuel consumption for a state, for a given state. Okay, by the way, this is zero, not six. Okay, now one extra thing to mention here all these features were numerical except region. If you recall, region was a categorical variable that it was either north or south so it was binary so region actually are handles that creates a dummy feature so the dummy fe uh, dummy feature here says that if the region is south it adds this much to fuel consumption and if it's north this basically is zero and this just disappears so this is either 1 or 2. So let me say uh, region was either north or south. We coded it as a factor. And if, if, you, if you look at the structure of the data, you'll see that the first level of that factor was north. And by default, R chooses the alphabetical order and it chooses the one that comes first alphabetically as the first level so this becomes our baseline R automatically chooses the first level as the baseline so north is the baseline so if we create a dummy on north on region so region dummy a zero would be north a 1 would be south. So back to our regression equation, if we plug in 1 here, we'll, we're saying that the state is in the south, is in the region of the south. So that would be essentially like multiplying 5.48 times 1, which means it's just plus 5.48. So that adds 5.48 to your prediction of fuel. If the region is is north, that means you will plug in a zero here. And that's multiplying anything by zero obviously makes it zero. So this would disappear. Essentially, that would be that's the idea behind the baseline. So zero, this guy disappears. It's like you're adding zero. You're adding nothing to the prediction of fuel. Okay, so if, if a state is in the south, it adds 5.48 to the, 
to the fuel prediction per person. If the state was in the north, it adds nothing. Okay, so that's another way of saying that uh, southern states have a higher uh, fuel c consumption per person than northern states. That is just off this made up data. Don't read too much more into that. I just wanted to explain um, how R handles uh, categorical features. This case, it was binary. Okay, so we saw the reg regression coefficients. I wanted to go over them, especially because of the scientific notation as well. And uh, I want to spend a little time on this one, which was different than the rest. It's a categorical features. The rest of these can be interpreted as rise over run slopes. Okay, the rest of these Bs, basically these numbers here, are slopes. If it's a negative slope, that that particular feature has a negative impact on fuel. If it's a positive slope, that means that feature has a positive impact on fuel. Fuel. Okay. So, by the way, when you do these multiple when you multiple regression models, features interact with each other in sometimes peculiar ways. So, something that you would expect to have a negative impact might turn out having a positive impact, and that has to do with how it's conflated with the other independent features. Okay, so I hope this was helpful and tied up any loose uh, loose ends that um, arose from part one and two of the multiple regression module. All right, so next time, have a great day.